Welcome everybody to a very belated first tutorial of the year 2021. It's February the 15th and today I'm going to show you how to make an awesomely easy short maturation aging cheese called Butterkäse. It's one of my favorites these days and pretty much to the date, six months ago, was the first time I tried making one at home. Six months later, I can do this thing without looking at the recipe book and I, 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 I can't get enough of it. It's a very easy cheese to make. It doesn't take a lot of aging. You can age it in your fridge. You can age it back sealed in a cold room. It's a very uncomplicated cheese, but it's a very, very, besides yummy and good tasting cheese, it's a very rewarding cheese. You can do so much with it. You can bake, you can slice, you can grade, you can melt. It's great for grilled cheese sandwiches. So it's an all around cheese, but it's very mild yet flavorful. Today I'm doing something different. I'm doing a 12 liter batch because I have this brand new semi-commercial cheese vat that I'm using. However, you can use any pot you want at home to heat your milk. So the temperatures you're trying to reach are rather low, always in their low to high 30s. This cheese needs 39 degrees Celsius. So you can do it in any pot that you have, put it on your stove top, and very, very gently and slowly heat the milk up. Preferably use a double boiler so that the milk surface doesn't get direct contact with the heat surface. But if you can't create a double boiler or if you don't have one, a simple pot with a, with a strong bottom, with a heavy, heavy duty bottom will work, okay? Like I said, I'm doing 12 liters, you can do, do eight liters or four liters with the same recipe, just scale it down by using the proportionate amount of cultures or rennet or calcium chloride, whatever we're gonna need in this recipe, just scale it down to the amount of milk that you wanna use. I wouldn't go less than four liters. That's a nice amount, you get one, one, one small piece of cheese out of that. Preferably, I would go with eight liters if you can. 12 liters makes you two nice big blocks. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Welcome to Mickey's Cheese Cavern. One more thing before we get into the actual cheese making. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to sterilize every single piece of equipment that you use that will come in contact with your milk and your curds. Set up a boiling pot of water, have all your utensils ready, put them in for 10 minutes, let them boil, and then drain them on a rack or something that's been sanitized as well, obviously. And every time you make a cheese, sanitize the equipment. Otherwise, you're just asking for disappointments. So I just wanted to emphasize that. So while the mi milk heats up, I like to add the calcium chloride at the beginning to give it time to recalcify the milk because obviously we're working with pasteurized milk, even though mine is non homogenized, but it's still pasteurized at a low temperature. And in order to recalcify it, you have to add calcium chloride. The only time you don't add calcium chloride is when you have raw milk, raw cow milk. So, a quarter of a teaspoon of calcium chloride mixed in with a quarter of a cup of water. And make sure that that water is non-chlorinated. Do not take water from the sink. If you have chlorinated water, use bottled water or something like that. Otherwise, you get the chlorification counteracting the calcification in the milk. And here I have this awesome big spoon. And so just take the milk, I mean the calcium chloride diluted in water, 
and stir it into the milk. I do it way at the beginning so it has time to, to do what it does. Stir it for a few seconds, up and down motion, sideways. Just make sure it gets properly stirred around. And that's it. And then let the milk heat up to 39 degrees. Burakese needs 39 degrees. So the milk has reached the temperature of 39, 39.1. I don't know if you can see that from up there. So that's perfect temperature, 39 degrees. Okay, so now I'm going to add this. That's what creates this specific cheese. Combinations of cultures create different flavors and so on and so forth. Buddha Käse only takes one simple thermophile culture because of the high temperature. And I'm gonna give it a quarter of a teaspoon. That's a generous quarter of a teaspoon. A little bit too much. That's a generous quarter of a teaspoon. And sprinkle it on top. And because this is not a liquid culture, but a dried culture, I'm gonna let it sit on top of the milk for about a minute or two. And then I'm gonna stir it in thoroughly. But I'm gonna let the culture rehydrate a little bit now, because if I stir it right away, I'm gonna create clumps and they're not gonna dissolve. So let it sit on top for about a minute, minute and a half. And once the cultures are stirred in, then we let the cultures do their work in the milk and put the lid back on, keep at the temperature, maintain the temperature of 39 degrees throughout the whole process. And we're just gonna let it sit and ripen for about 40, 45 minutes. Okay, this is enough. Now I can stir the culture in. I don't know if you can see that. There's the fat on top of my milk, those fat bubbles, because of the temperature now, and that's because my milk is non-homogenized. If you buy regular grocery store, three and a half, 3.8 percent organic milk, uh, homogenized, you won't get those fat bubbles. That's what you want, but you won't get them. So if you want good cheese, spend the money for good milk. Find non-homogenized milk. There's two or three brands in Quebec and Ontario that make non-homogenized milk. And that's as close as you'll get to buying raw milk in Canada. Okay, so 40 minutes have just gone by. And now the cultures have done their part. And now we're gonna turn the liquid milk into cheese curds. So we're gonna add the rennet. I personally only use organic veggie rennet. I don't use animal rennet um, for several reasons. One of them being that this way my cheeses can also be enjoyed by vegetarians because the vast majority of cheeses are made with animal rennet, which unfortunately many people don't know. And I don't want to go down that road. So anyway, a quarter of a teaspoon of rennet. Oh, a half a teaspoon, sorry. Half a teaspoon of rennet. Put it into a quarter cup of water. Again, not chlorinated water. And then mix it into your milk. Make sure it's thoroughly mixed in because otherwise you'll have more curd building in one area and less in the other. So give it a stir for about a minute. And again, maintain the temperature of 39 degrees throughout the whole thing. The good thing is milk, if you keep the lid on, if you, if you do stovetop, if you just turn the element off, keep, put the lid on 
wrap your pot in a towel or something, you should be fairly steady with your temperatures. So now the milk has set for 50 minutes and I'm going to check whether we get a curd break or not. And if we have the curd break, then we can continue. If the curd mass is still too soft, too unstable, then all I'm going to do is put the lid back on and let it sit for another 15 minutes. These little ladles are much better than knives to use for this. So anyway, I'm gonna stick in here and pull it up and see if it breaks. There you go. Very nice break. Okay, so that's a good break. So what I'm gonna do now is cut the curds into one inch pieces. Just one inch in all directions. And the reason one inch pieces is because I don't want this cheese to be too dry. And the smaller you cut the curds, the more liquid whey gets released, not the other direction. And the more liquid whey gets released, the drier the cheese is going to be. And I want the, my Buddha keys to be nice and moist. Okay. And once I did the horizontal and the vertical, because I don't have a cheese harp here, I'm gonna do diagonal in all four directions to cut the curds in half. Okay, and after this is done, you're gonna let it sit for about five minutes for the curds to heal. That means to close up again on the outside so when we start stirring it, we don't lose too much weight. So put the lid on, wait five minutes. So the cheese has been, the curds have been sitting for five minutes now and I'm gonna start stirring. Gently stir your curds for 15 minutes in order to release, release the whey out of your curds and to be able to make the cheese later. 15 minutes stirring for this specific cheese. And this is what it looks like when you go in for the first time. There are your curds. And you just gently break them up. That's what it's supposed to look like. Just gently break them up. Nobody said cheese making was a great exercise. So, might as well be comfortable doing it. Now comes an interesting step because the Buddha Kese, what you do is you wash the curds. There's a few cheeses where you have to do that. Buddha Kese is one of them. And what that means is you take 50% roughly of the liquid that you had in your milk container out, remember it's at 39 degrees temperature, and you replace it with water that's at 60 degrees temperature to bring the curd temperature up a little bit, but also to clear out the water. And after that, you stir again for 10 minutes and you wash the curds. An easy way of doing that is by taking any kind of sieve, putting it into your container, whichever container you have, grabbing a bucket and going in there and taking the way out. And seeing that this is a 12 liter batch, 50% would be obviously six liters. So I'm gonna take out about five liters. And you can just scale that to your own amount of milk that you use. And I can't emphasize this enough. The whey is absolutely 
worthwhile to save. You can use it in your smoothies in the morning. You can drink it the way it is. You can give it to your puppies or your kittens. You could use it in baking. You can use it as, as, as a sauce base. Um, you can give it to your plants. There's nothing you can't do with it. It's healthy. It's, it, help, it aids in weight loss. It's just a, it, and it's full of nutrients. So don't throw your way out. It lasts about seven to 10 days in the fridge, maybe a little bit longer. It freezes excellently if you want to freeze it. I definitely use my way in all kinds of cooking and puppy food and cat food and my morning smoothie is made with whey. The only thing I haven't gotten around to yet is fermenting it because you can make some pretty wicked whey vodka and whey gin, but I have not come around to that yet. In the background, I have clear hot water at the temperature 60 degrees. And remember here too, don't use um, water. The first, don't, don't use water that comes from the tap that's chlorinated. It'll affect your cheese dramatically. It's like having chlorinated coffee in the morning. Use bottled water if you can. It makes this cheese a little bit more expensive because you have to have the bottled water there, but it is such a big difference. And you go in there and you start washing the curds. I'm gonna give it a few more spoons like this, just to bring the temperature up a little bit. And then I'm gonna pour the rest in. Let's see, I'm supposed to be around 43 degrees right now. 43 to 45, let's see what the thermometer says. Forty-five point five. Okay. Then I'm gonna take some cold water. I need more water in there, otherwise the temperature is gonna go up. It's also just bottled water. There we go. That's all of it. And now another stir for ten minutes. Just, this is what's called washing the curds. And this solution here obviously is not a full whey anymore because it's diluted with 50% water. It's the perfect base to make a brine, either a saturated or non-saturated brine, whichever percentage you want, and to use it to saturate and salt your cheese or for stews or for anything you want to brine. This is a perfect solution for brining. Okay. So I took two mason jars and put the, put the um, pure whey in there. And now I stirred, I washed the curds for, for a good 10 minutes. I'm gonna put the, the sieve back in there and take out as much whey as I can, this time only in order to reach the curds. This is as far as I can get in there to get the way out. I'm just gonna put that in there. I'm gonna get a little bit more way out, just taking it off the top. Nothing wrong with that. It's just, I don't wanna waste any curds and get them in the ladle here. And you see that I'm wearing gloves now. That's simply because the next step is going to encompass actually handling the curds and seeing that some of my cheese is not just for me. I prefer to deliver cheese without any hair, which is why I wear gloves. Now, get yourself a container or do this over the sink. Put your molds, I will 
right up right now online. You can see what kind of molds these are. You can order them so many places. Cheese places, Glengarry, New England. I mean, there's, there's, and they're like five, six bucks or something. They're not expensive. What you do also need for the Buddha Kesa are the followers to go on top. But I'll show that later. So now we got three, three molds and we're gonna line those. I'm gonna actually try something. We're gonna line one of them or two of them. We're gonna line with cheesecloth. And one of them I'm not gonna line with cheesecloth simply because I want to experiment with something today and see how these molds hold up if I don't use cheesecloth. Because supposedly I don't have to, but I haven't done that yet. So the next step is pretty simple. You take another ladle and you start getting your, your curds out and just put them in there, space them out a little bit. all the way to the top. What I'm gonna do with, so this one here, I'm gonna make straight simple burakese. This one here, I tried something yesterday or today and I cooked some, um, some sun-dried tomatoes. So I'm gonna sprinkle some sun-dried tomatoes in here And I'm also gonna sprinkle a little bit of that juice over top just to get a little bit of a coloring because it'll run through, right? But this way the cheese is gonna have a little bit more of a toma tomato look to it. Okay. I'm gonna finish this one first because that hand has no tomato clusters on it. I don't wanna touch the other cheese. Didn't think about that. One more layer here. And I'm gonna put some, the rest of the tomatoes on top here. Spread them out. Drizzle some of the tomato juice over top. Oh yes, that looks awesome. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna go quickly wash my hands now, rinse them off. Okay, now the, the rest of the curds. here and just simply pour it through that last mold here. Okay, so three different procedures. One classic with the cheesecloth, one with the classic cheesecloth and the sandwich tomatoes, and one, because I was curious. Oh, I'm gonna, oh. there you go. Okay, and when you have the cheesecloth one, just fold 
a single slot over. Okay, like that. Then you have your followers that you put on top. Like that. And like that. Now, because these are going to be pushed down by weight, I shouldn't have to push them down too far, but I like just putting the mason jars on top and put that into the press. So this is what it looks like right now. I got the three cheeses between the boards and I have a 12 kilogram water bucket on top um, because I don't have any free weights. So otherwise, if you have weights, put weights on there. But this cheese needs 12 kilograms of pressure. And in 30 minutes, I'm gonna flip the curds once, and then they go back under the press for 12 hours. So the first 30 minutes are over. I took the weight off, and I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna flip one cheese. All three, obviously, but I'm gonna have a look at them first. Just unwrap them. This is the standard one. Yeah, you gotta, gotta be gentle. They're still very fragile, but that came out nice. Put it back in the other way. And that pretty much sums up the cheese making part. Now it's gonna stay in the press for a good 12 to 16 hours, so overnight. It's three o'clock now, so until tomorrow morning. And then I'm gonna take it out of the press and put it into the brine. And that's when I'm gonna finish this tutorial video tomorrow. Okay. Okay, so it's now nine o'clock the next morning and my cheeses have been pressing all night. Oops, there's a lot of way in this one. Let's see how they came out. Well, you can see the difference. Same weight, sa same curds, and the one with the cheesecloth is a lot tighter than the one without. So that is a big difference. So cheesecloth is definitely needed for that. And now all that's left to do is put them in 18% brine, saturated brine, and soak them in there for 24 hours take them out, air dry them for two to three days, and then either wax them or vacuum seal them. And after spending the night in the brine solution, the cheese are now out and drying. 
amongst some others. And that, folks, is how you make burakese at home. It's a really simple cheese to make. In four weeks, it's going to be very, very enjoyable. In six weeks, it's going to be better. And in eight weeks, it's going to be spectacular. I hope you're going to try it. So here's the usual. Please share, subscribe, let other folks know about the channel. But more importantly, stay tuned because I'm really, really close to opening up that commercial outlet. Right now, it's just going to be farmer's markets for a couple more weeks, but I'm hoping that the commercial outlet is going to happen soon. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, enjoy your cheese. Bye. <laughs>